From Alcapulco, Mexico, this is Anarchast. It's a little early, 7.30 in the morning, but uh, heading off to Puerto Vallarta uh, to do some stem cells. Hopefully with the dogs. We'll see if they allow them on the plane. Hey, Polo, I hope so. I hope so. We don't know in person, have we? Yeah, we have it. First time. <laughs> All right, so the good and the bad in Mexico is stem cells are not regulated, which is really awesome we can do this. But at the same time, you got to make sure it's done by a lab that knows what they're doing. These guys have been doing this for 16 years. This is third-party lab tested, so it's not just them saying, hey, these are good. <laughs> no, no, it's really making sure. Um, he's actually working with the Senate to create some regulations. Hopefully they won't. It'll just stay the way it is. <laughs> but uh, they... Uh, these are all the different viruses it's been tested for, the tissue. The stem cells themselves can pass a virus, but as you see, it's only 98% viable stem cells. You're always going to have a little bit of tissue left over from the, the placenta and the umbilical tissue. These markers, I mean, they mean nothing unless you're a cellular biologist, but uh, these are the different markers, the CD markers, that it has to represent either negative or positive to be that kind of cell. That's how they tell. And... This means it's over 98% that, and then it's free of endotoxins, free of bacterias, free of mycoplasma, and then this is images from the electron microscope. So they count these, and they're like, oh, let's say there's 20 there, right? Just for easy math, and they replicate that however many times to get to like the 100 million or more. So you get everything tested so you know it is mesenchymal stem cells. You're not just putting whatever in your body, so. Yeah. So this is your second time actually doing stem cells. You did it at a different clinic before, right? Yeah, I did it with uh, Chantal Gal Galvin. Galvin? Do you oh, know her? I don't know her, no. She's here in Puerto Vallarta as well. I don't know if she's still here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I did it uh, last year, so this is my second time doing stem cells. Awesome. Very cool. And you were telling me, we were talking about how like you've been feeling kind of like you feel like you haven't lost any like size or anything it's been do you feel that like i go to the gym i feel more blood flow to the muscles and things like i don't know if you've experienced that or kind of what you've seen since well, it's, it's funny because i didn't really realize it until we started talking but because we've been on very similar regimens we did very similar things around the same time last year including stem cells and i was when you were talking you were like i don't know what's going on i, I I haven't been like going to the gym much, I, I've been eating crappy, and I'm not putting on any fat or anything, and I'm keeping all my muscle mass without even going to the gym. And I was like, yeah, me too. I thought there was something weird going on with yeah. me. Now we can't say for sure that's the stem cells, but that's the only thing that we can both think of that's changed in the last year. And we've been just like freakishly, like our bodies have been yeah. just working amazing. And it's totally anecdotal, but I There's mean... two people. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> two people. And you know, I've worked with over a hundred people this year. And we've reported the same thing from other people, so yeah. it, it seems to be a thing. Like my guess is the stem cells target inflammation. Well, you go to the gym, you're causing inflammation, and it's going in there and repairing. I mean, it, it makes it makes sense for what it is. It's just I don't think it's the sort of thing people are associating with it because you know you, people hear stem cells and they just I think the misconception is they just think oh these get in your body and become whatever you need, mm -hmm. and it's not what they are. You know, like these are mesenchymal stem cells. So they're considered adult stem cells. So they're actually, I mean, it, a better name for them would be messenger signaling cells. In fact, like the doctor who invented or came up with the name wants to switch it to that, but you know, it's one of those things, once you name it, it is. So yeah, they target inflammation and they just make you feel better. It's real interesting stuff. Oh, super interesting. And uh, I want to get into what stem cells even are because 
Uh, and you pointed out that the name's actually not great. Uh, the guy wishes that he could rename them, but it's, once, once you name something, it's, it's hard to change it. Uh, but uh, I didn't realize these things, no one even knew about them like 20, 30 years ago. Like there might have been some people knew a few things, but really the, they only started doing it with humans like 15 years ago or something like that. I, I have no idea. I have to yeah. assume they've been around a lot longer than that. So let's start from the very beginning, from what okay. you know about stem cells. Uh, like. What are they? What, you know, <laughs> yeah. how, how do we get to this point where I'm putting it in my blood? <laughs> yeah, all right. It's interesting. So um, Arnold Kaplan, he was the one who discovered them. He's the one who named them and all that. And he, you know, he just goes around like explaining them and stuff now. And research continues. Our lab we work with is this guy, Dr. Jose Medina Flores. He's based out of Guadalajara, and he's a gynecologist. And actually, he started all this as his PhD thesis in the cellular biology. And in the course of that, he started, he actually took a biopsy of patients with incontinence. You know, they're having trouble controlling their bowels and stuff. Took biopsy from their bicep tissue and then isolated the stem cells, cultivated them up, re-injected them into the people, and he fixed their incontinence. And so, you know, amazing PhD thesis, all this, but at the same time, it was like such new science. No one believed him, right? So next thing you know, like uh, the animal breeders start picking up on this. You know, they're like, oh, hey, the prize dog, like race dogs, race horse owners start approaching him. And he starts doing the same thing for them. Starts getting all these prize award winning, you know, like race horses and dogs. And then he wanted to get back to people. That was his goal. And his mom had type 2 diabetes. And from what they were finding is that like these stem cells sent out these signals called cytokines, they're proteins, and for the immune system, they act like antivirus software would be the best way to describe it. it. Like it puts the program into the T cells, into the B cells, into the killer cells, and into the macrophages, and essentially reprograms them to do their job right. So in type 2 diabetes, they're attacking the pancreas, they're all confused. These get to them, send out these signals, reprogram them, and now they start protecting the pancreas like they're supposed to. So that's where he got started. He spent the next you know, 15 years just perfecting things, growing his lab. He also has a fertility clinic. And that's actually where the, the stem cells come from. They come from healthy live births, pre-planned from the very beginning. And you know, girls that went in there and wanted to have a baby. And almost in all cases, like people just get rid of the placenta or the umbilical cord tissue. They're like, oh, it's just waste. Well, that's where these stem cells come from. Mm. And it's such a great spot for a couple of reasons because first they replicate the fastest. Like you or I, like if we went and did our own stem cells from like fat or bone marrow, like uh, we, we actually had my sister-in-law as a doctor trained in this in Cornavaca. They took liposuction from like a, a healthy 35 year old. They could isolate the stem cells, which is something they can't do in the US or Canada and from the fat and then they culture it up, so it's pure stem cells. But for a healthy 35-year-old, it'd take a month to get like 10 million mm. stem cells where you're getting 100 million right now. That's and those were cultured in a day, like in a few hours, basically. So it, they double each time, so it's just compound math, you know? It's just so much faster, the faster the replication. So, yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting, and uh, I, I I actually mentioned on a YouTube video just the other day that I was going to do this, yeah, okay. and I always get trolls, and everyone's always <laughs> criticizing me and all that, and I'm totally used to it, but yeah. uh, this guy posted, he said, well, oh, what are you going to do next, Berwick? Are you going to drink baby blood to keep young? <laughs> you know, you're, you're so vain, you just want to look young and beautiful your whole life and all that. And well, yeah, I want to look good, but yeah. also I want to feel good. That's actually way more important. And, For sure. and you know, if you don't have your health, you have nothing. And I've always found it so strange that people wait until they get sick before they go to a doctor mm -hmm. <laughs> or, or focus on their health at all, yeah. right? Or do things like this, right? I've always been like, why wouldn't you do this before you get sick so you just don't get sick? <laughs> Everything in our, our culture, our cult is so upside down and wrong, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but so I'm doing these things because. You know, you feel better, and when you feel better, you can do more things, and you can be more productive, or whatever you want to do. You can be with your kids, or whatever you want to do. So, uh, that's the main reason I'm doing it. But I did want to kind of answer <coughs> that question because, you know, you are taking this from a, a live birth, yeah, as coming from a part of a thing that was supporting a baby <laughs> at one point, yeah. And I, I want to be careful myself. Like, I don't want to be doing anything where I'm. Uh, for example, if you said, I've heard about drinking baby blood, for example, right? Like these, these elite people do it. Yeah, right. And I hear that they, they actually like 
take the babies and they like put them into massive fear so that their their blood goes full of uh, adrenaline and then they take their blood. Right? Yeah. yeah, it's creepy. So that's horrible. That's torturing babies. And that's so not, I would never ever do that, right? No. This is totally different because this is a person who's just having a baby. They were going to throw it away anyway, and we're like, well, if you're going to throw it away, I'll take it, right? So I'm yeah. not hurting anyone by taking this. Right? No. And the best part is you're not hurting anyone and. Think of it this way, people get so afraid, oh, it's coming from someone else. And I get the fear there. You're thinking viruses, you're thinking something else, you're thinking like, what if your body rejects it? You know, a lot of these things. So, you know, any girl who's ever been pregnant or anyone who's, you know, been through that route, like they do so much testing on women to make sure there's no viruses or anything. Or if there are, they know about it. Plus, you know, Mexico is the Wild West, which, you know, is why I think we both love it, you know, and far from medical, it's uh, stem cells aren't regulated here. So that's why we can do things they can't do in Canada or the US, which is awesome. It can be scary if people aren't doing things right, don't get me wrong, but as we know, the market tends to correct those sort of things. Mm -hmm. So this lab's been doing it for 16 years. They do an amazing job, and the tissue it comes from lacks what's called HLA, and that's what would tell your body to reject it. So like, your son or daughter, if they wanted to donate a kidney to you because say your kidneys were failing, like even if they were a perfect match, your body would still try to reject it. They'd have to give you immunosuppressing drugs, right? Well, this doesn't do that because of the, it lacks the HLA. It lacks a marker that tells your body, hey, reject that. So as far as your body's concerned, you're just getting more mesenchymal stem cells. You're not getting like any, you're not getting something that's like foreign to you. And it's really not a big deal. It would be like, it's like, you know, we do a lot of growth hormone treatments. It's bioidentical. Mm -hmm. It's an amino acid. It's like putting another amino acid in you. It's that. There's nothing scary or wrong about it. Mm -hmm. um, now, the reason why a lot of fear comes up with even the name stem cells and why these probably shouldn't even be called stem cells again is because the embryonic stem cells. They're using like aborted babies and stuff. And like, just to show you how wrong that was, I mean, even like George Bush like put a ban on that in the US that he said- I one of the whole terms <laughs> Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> well, the reason why was he didn't want to spend federal money where they knew it wouldn't work. Well, the state of California decided to go ahead with it anyway. On a state level, spent $2 billion researching embryonic stem cells. They spent $1.8 billion before they realized they could not manipulate those cells into anything usable. They're from embryos. They want to become a baby. They just keep replicating. They become a tumor every time. So people associate cancer with stem cells where these are adult stem cells. If anything, they can actually like help cancer in a lot of sense. We don't recommend it for cancer at this time, but there are a couple doctors working with stuff. And in fact, leukemia, for example, my uncle had leukemia. They do a bone marrow transplant. They've been doing this since the 19, like, I think, 70s. And the bone marrow is loaded with stem cells, so that's what saves these people's life. My uncle's alive today because he got a bone marrow transplant from his sister, and the mesenchymal stem cells in that bone marrow went and reprogrammed the cells in his immune in his bloodstream took care of his leukemia so this isn't like this is so it's the actual stem cells that were actually fixing it yeah and they didn't realize that that's what was happening till uh, about you know 20 years ago when arnold kaplan came around but they've been doing it for longer because they realized it worked it just took that long to figure out what the mechanism of action was wow that's yeah. really interesting i just heard a friend uh, a nurture capitalist friend um, his daughter, who's like seven, has leukemia, mm. and we're going to do a bit of a fundraiser for them. But I wanted to, because uh, I know there's always a natural solution or a better solution than what you're told by the doctors up in the U.S. <laughs> yeah, that, right. And so it's very interesting. Uh, maybe she can get stem cells, and maybe that can uh, uh, help. Uh, what's, yeah, what's I mean, we're not focused on it, but like uh, doctor, It'd be worth a shot at least, right? Well, where I would refer her to, and I've done for other cancer people, because it's just not our focus. I don't yeah. want to try and focus on things that like we're not experts at. Mm -hmm. Doctor Neil Riordan in Panama, he's the expert on that. Okay. He actually, have you ever heard of high dose vitamin C for treating cancer? I've heard of it. He owns the patents on that, and he doesn't enforce them because he wants to help people. What? So he's doing the same type of stem cells in Panama. You know, he's become very famous for it because he's, you know, interviewed with like, he saved Mel Gibson's dad and other people, but like he, he tested these on two patients through FDA trials that kids with muscular dystrophy save their, they usually don't make it past like age 12. These kids came to him, injects them all over with stem cells, gets the muscle back, and now they just need an IV every year. 
they got tired of going to Panama all the time. So he spent like, I think almost a million dollars for these two FDA exemptions to bring the cells up and treat them in the US. You know, I'm saying he has spent that much money to like do something that he's proven works. But they do it and they made him test it on all kinds of animals with cancer. And in every case, it destroyed the tumors. Wow. <laughs> so it's wow. just, it's insane. Like, yeah, the amount of stories that you've told me, uh, other people have told me, the last the doctor who did the stem cells with me, he was like, he gave it to his wife. He said she had diabetes, lupus, mm -hmm. and some other really crazy thing. And it, and it just got rid of all of them. And you were telling me, well, you've got over there, uh, may I'll try to take a, a video of that later. All right, so uh, this is actually an MRI, both of these are, of my knee. This is my right knee, this is also my right knee. This is from May 2018. And this little area right here, that's the meniscus. And you can, kind of, you can tell here that it's much clearer. Unless you're a radiologist, you're not gonna be able to tell. But essentially, I had four different lesions on my meniscus. Um, had, this is like a side view, so it's kind of tough. But here was, up here was one. Here was one and then both sides had one. So one was third degree, the other was a first degree and two second degree. And then my ACL also um, had a tear in it. And you know, normally all that they could do is surgery. I had, I only had 32 million stem cells with PRP injected into this knee. Uh, we now do 44 million because we're able to get more in there with the way the lab's done it. And this was done three weeks ago that March, uh, here in March, 2019, and it's completely regenerated all of that. I no longer have those issues. The only other way would have been surgery. If you were anywhere else, they'd tell you, oh, you just gotta go get orthopedic surgery, maybe scope it, do whatever they can do. Yeah, quick injection, literally took one minute. In the knee, done. <laughs> you hear this from athletes, a lot who've yeah. done the stem cells, it just fixes whatever problem you have. Yeah. And uh, you were mentioning that it pretty much cures type 2 diabetes stem cells, so uh, yeah. it, it's no uh, coincidence, I don't think, that this is very illegal in the U.S. because it basically is, like it fixes everything. <laughs> like yeah. you, wouldn't, you wouldn't need doctors or pharmaceuticals very often uh, if you just had this. I mean, yeah, you think of the industries it would disrupt and it's just <laughs> bad. I mean, you think of all the orthopedic surgeries and things that like wouldn't be needed. I mean, how many people could go walk around in pain, pain free, not get addicted to opiates, you know, and all these, you know, all these other things that benefit big pharma. So it, yeah. uh, it, it, it is weird, but it's really funny how they regulate it too. I mean, and not funny in a bad way and how messed up it is, but like, so you can take it from your own fat and even bone marrow in cases. But what they do is they say, okay, you can take it out, and it's it's your own cells. You should be able to put at least your own cells back in your body, right? In the lab with a freak. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that much to say. <laughs> but uh, they, uh, what they do is they say, okay, you can take it out, and all they do is they add an enzyme to it that's naturally occurring called collagenase, and they put it in a centrifuge, just like you do platelet-rich plasma. They spin it up, tissue goes to the bottom, liquid comes to the top. Well, that liquid has some stem cells in it, but it's mostly stromal cells and other types of cells. They take it from your fat, they spin it up, it separates it, it's like maybe 1% stem cell. So if you don't isolate the stem cell and culture it up, it's not really a stem cell treatment. But clever marketing, these doctors in the US are saying it's stem cells because the FDA makes them re-inject it the same day. They don't even give them the option because they added collagenase, uh, an enzyme that's in your body already, it's now a medication instead of a treatment. <laughs> like that's that's how they blocked it all. It's just it, oh, it's so wrong. <laughs> yeah, everything's wrong with governments and all these regulators. <laughs> yeah, people just really don't realize how evil and wrong all these things are. Uh, and you know that's one of the great things about here in Mexico. And it's, it, that's yeah. another reason they demonize Mexico so much, right? Oh, big time. Like, yeah. a, if you talk to your average American who watches their television program, and they're like, "I would never go to Mexico. It's so dangerous. <laughs> like, it's beautiful. It's amazing." But yeah. that's, they don't want people to know. And yeah. you come down here, and we're here in Puerto Vallarta, and you're in a I don't even know what you call it. So there's a hospital here and a whole bunch of services. There's plastic surgeons, mm -hmm. there's a fertility clinic all on this floor. Um, so it's like any sort of like uh, treatment or anything you, you need, you can get here and usually for a lot cheaper than you're going to yeah. get in the U.S. Way less, yeah. yeah. And we got the Hard Rock Hotel across the street, beachfront. <laughs> I mean, like, it's a brand new hospital. It's not like you're coming to some like, I think people just picture Tijuana when they think of Mexico as the problem. Yeah, don't go to the border, guys. <laughs> yeah, Tijuana, 
Tijuana is like the worst place in Mexico, in case you didn't know. Uh, I have yet to even find a dangerous neighborhood here. <laughs> it's no, just, it's nuts. So, nice, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, funny with that. Yeah, it's beautiful. So, the stem cells is, um, you know, a lot of people don't really know about that. So what are, what are the costs, for example? I know you give me a good deal because we're friends, <laughs> yeah. uh, but what, what would it be a, a normal cost? Yeah, a normal cost is pretty simple. We do a lot of articulations and IVs. That's kind of our focus. So that encompasses like knees, elbows, shoulders. So sho like shoulders, hip, knees, those we use 44 million stem cells. We add activated PRP, platelet-rich plasma, and then uh, we inject that and we include an MRI too, which we were able to do the day before, and that's 2,500 US dollars. If you decide to do two shoulders, eh, we, we add it's uh, 4,500. Now, um, that's for that for like wrist, elbow, ankles, plantar fasciitis, those we can only do 22 million, it's just a smaller joint, can't get as much in. And so that's 1,500, includes an MRI, you know, all the analysis, things you might wait, you know, months for in the U.S. or Canada to even get that. that. Years sometimes to wait for an MRI. Yeah. Here you can get it the same day for yeah. about 300 bucks. Yeah, we've had people that like, yeah, they, they were going to get an MRI done in like L.A. And it was going to cost them as much as the whole knee treatment. They're like, well, skip that, let's go. <laughs> so it, it sucks, but it is. And then IVs, you know, for like 100 million like this, it's $3,000. The max we usually do is like 300 million. I've personally done that and that's $8,000. So, you know, it can get up in price, but considering that 300 million is what we use to treat autoimmune disorders, like if you have diabetes or rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or fibromyalgia, like that's what we would give you. A higher dose, like all at once, it gets in there. Now, this is something to know, actually, you should know too, is like 80% of these that you're getting right now, they're never gonna get past your lungs and heart. And it's not totally a bad thing. And the reason why, we all have a ton of inflammation there. That's why we have to do a crazy number, like 100 million. That's why like, there's these clinics in the US doing like 5 million, and it's like they don't see results. It's not enough, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but, so they're gonna get there. The lungs act as a bit of a filter, but they are gonna target the inflammation there and help. Plus, those cytokines I told you about, the signaling proteins, they're gonna come into contact with so many immune cells there, and they're gonna reprogram and even aren't going right. So that's one effect. Plus, at the same level, they do like a triage. I mean, these things are smart. It's crazy. It's like they, they do a triage of every cell they come in contact with, and they say, hey, you're okay. You're going to die no matter what. But you, if you just had a new engine, you'd be rocking. So they can donate their mitochondria, which is like the, it's like the engine. It's like swapping the engine out of an old car and putting a new one in. It's a new car, basically, right? Same sort of deal. And it's a big part of the anti-aging, because first, you're targeting inflammation, which makes a new one age. Second, you're donating the mitochondria, this cell that would have died otherwise. And when cells die, they don't just like affect themselves. It's not like they just go away. They send out all these bad signals that like affect other cells. And a lot of other cells tend to die at the same time because of that. So you're preventing that from happening. And then the third is they can help extend telomere length. And do you know much about telomeres? Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's so interesting. But think of it like the tail, right? Mm -hmm. It's like this DNA double helix with the ladder. And each time a cell replicates, you lose a rung. Well, if we can extend telomere length, they assume we can live longer. Right now, it's called the Hayflick limit. A cell can only replicate 50 or 60 times, and it goes into what's called senescence, which is like this cell death process. Again, it affects other cells, and it's bad. Well, according to that science, a human being can only live to 125 years old, on, like at the cellular level that we are now. But if we can find a way to extend telomere length, we can live longer than that. And the assumption from what they're seeing is that not only live longer, but like you're not going to look older too. They're going to be able to help with that. So a lot of research, they've conclusively confirmed there's at least six types of cells that these types of stem cells extend to in their length. They think there's more, but it, it's really tricky science. So the research is still ongoing. So it's really good for anti-aging too. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it's, a, it's pretty amazing not more people do this sort of thing. Uh, yeah. I guess it's only been really around for a few years. Uh, it's a sort of illegal in, in line with the free in most countries. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's a big part of the reason. Um, and I guess, you know, just like anything, it takes a little while before people get confident about it, right? They want to at least yeah. hear about it and see what happens, see, see if I'm dead in like five years or <laughs> yeah, whatever, yeah, right? right. Um, but from all the information I've read about it and heard about it from people like you, it's like a miracle sort of thing. Like it fixes almost anything that you have a problem with. And I actually know that from last year when I did stem cells. I think I did mm -hmm. 50 million last year. 
Um, and uh, the only thing that I could say that I had a problem with my body was my stomach. And I, I don't know why, but I'd had it for years. It just wasn't working properly. <laughs> it was just not good. Um, and a lot of bloatedness and a lot of um, uh, just, you know, go to the washroom and it was never solid or anything like that. It was just not good at all. And like, if people ever, ever saw it, it's like, oh man, you're sick or something. It's like, I know. And um, so I did the stem cells and I didn't think too much about it, but about three months, maybe six months after the stem cells, all of a sudden I noticed that all my stomach problems seemed to have gone away. So mm -hmm. it appears that it just fixed the stomach problems that I had, which is amazing. Um, and like you said, your knee, it just totally just fixed it. Yeah. Uh, people with diabetes, just gone. Uh, some people with cancer sometimes, just gone. It's like. This is like totally miraculous kind of stuff, and you know, not that expensive when you think about it. When you think about the amount that people spend on pharmaceuticals for when they're sick and they're sick their whole <laughs> lives because the doctors never have any intention of healing you, they just want you to be alive still so you can pay the bills uh, that they give you uh, and, and just get you sicker and sicker and sicker. But for a few thousand bucks, and what would you recommend, like doing this like sort of like once a year sort of a thing, just as a sort of a, you know, for a person like myself, maybe just come once a year, sort of. Yeah, if you just like thousand bucks once a year. Yeah, if you're generally healthy, I think the like, exact dose you're doing once a year is like the perfect way to go, and it also restocks your your stem cells. So the stem cells, I'll have to, I'll send you a picture so maybe you can put it on. But like before, their stem cells, they're called pericytes, not a parasite, but pericyte. And they look like an octopus wrapped around like a, a blood vessel. They do it on the capillaries, actually. So they're actually there beforehand. They're controlling your blood flow and stuff is what they're finding. Your blood pressure is also highly affected by this. Um, we've seen a lot of people with high blood pressure reduce it just from getting the stem cells. But my point is that basically they're there beforehand and then they rush to the area of inflammation. We're gonna get Jeff here, another uh, 20 million. So the pericytes um, wrapped around the capillaries. And so the point is basically your capillaries when you're a little kid, you have the most. Up until men, 21, we hit bone maturity. Women, age 18. Well, once we hit bone maturity, we lose 90% of our capillaries. And that's where these pericytes are. And the pericyte, they release and become the stem cells and go to inflammation. And that's why little kids heal so well. The kid gets hurt, like they break their arm, they're like good two weeks later. <laughs> you know, like you or I break our arm, we're out for like who knows how long, you know? So that's part of it. So now what you're doing is, okay, you, don't, you still don't have as many uh, capillaries like at our age, but since we were 21, we've lost a lot of those pericytes because they become stem cells and gone to areas. Maybe they never made it back, or maybe they got lost or they die off. So by doing an IV, you're restocking those levels. And I learned this from a doctor named uh, Dr. Correa, who's the assistant professor of sports medicine at the University of Miami. And he was breaking it down just like that. He said, you're, you're basically giving yourself like, at least like for the next four years post-treatment, you're restocking the supplies. Hmm. In my opinion, it's better to do it once a year just to like target any inflammation to go. But like, if you were really just trying to kind of get back, you could even do it less frequent than that. Hmm. You know, like I did 300 million my first time and the only reason was just because I won't offer anything that I wouldn't do myself. And that's really about, you know, we've done higher, but that's typically 1.4 million per pound of body weight. It's kind of like the, the top limit the lab recommends. You can go higher if you weigh more and things, but the most they've ever done is a billion. <laughs> like someone got a billion at once. So uh, we actually, we got a lady from Kelowna that we did a treatment for with Alzheimer's and we did 500 million to her brain via like a surgery type situation. Like they wow. ran a port catheter through a femoral artery up to her carotid under general anesthesia, 500 million, and then she woke up and did 100 million. For anesthesia, yeah. So it's uh, you can do a lot, and this yeah, lady was like in her eighties. Um, she seems to be okay. We're still waiting for like the follow up. You really need to wait at least like six months to know exactly like to do a follow up MRI. So we're it's only been I think like three months now. So I can't give you like any definitive there, but you know it'll be really yeah, good. It to seems see. to take a few months to kind of start fixing things, right? Mm -hmm. Like what, how long was your knee? My knee took. Confirmed it about six months. I did an ultrasound and it showed it healed. But confirming an ultrasound and MRI is not apple to apple. So three weeks ago, I did another MRI of the knee and it's 100% regenerated. My ACL no longer has a tear. My meniscus had a third degree lesion on the posterior, first degree anterior, and two second degrees on the uh, exteriors and completely regenerated. Like I have a new knee. 
<laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. So it seems to take a few months to do those sort of things, right? Uh, that's what I noticed with yeah. my stomach. It was about somewhere between three and six months I started to notice you know, all of a sudden my stomach problems were fine. So, uh, and just let people know it's only about an hour uh, it takes. So. Uh, it's no big deal. It's just a big little IV, just like your typical IV. Um, and you're actually going to mm -hmm. inject a bunch of vitamins afterwards, like a Myers cocktail type thing. Yeah, exactly. So it'll feel great, awesome. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, Get some energy. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and then over the next few months or year, uh, my body will just be kind of like repairing any problems that it has, which is awesome. Yeah. And then one other thing that we're going to do too is uh, they call it the placenta implant, but it's a bad translation. It's lyophilized placenta, it's freeze dried. So it's like a really popular thing now is women will give birth and have their placenta freeze dried and take it like a pill. What we do is we mix it with saline solution and we inject it subcutaneous into the stomach fat and it slowly releases into your system over like a month or two. And it just, it's loaded with so many minerals and vitamins and other things. So it's just more tools for the stem cells to, to work with, more things to help repair. So yeah, we, we do that with all the IV treatments. Cool. Yeah, it's really interesting stuff. Um, it's just amazing. Like I'm shocked that more people don't know about it. So, but I guess they probably will over time. Yeah, it's a lot of confusion because you know there's a lot of bad info out there because yeah. you know in the U.S., Canada, other places they can't do it. So they're they're doing things similar, and it's really confusing people. <laughs> you know, and then we're calling it stem cells when it probably shouldn't even be called stem cells. So people are thinking it's like embryonic or it just becomes what it needs. So. I think once you know more good information gets out, I mean, there's pl there's like 18,000 studies on PubMed on these types of cells. I mean, it's not like it's been researched. It's not like people don't even have that excuse. Oh, I'm gonna wait till we know. We know it's safe. Like mm -hmm. there's no doubt about that. It's just I think it's kind of getting through all of the you know just people's misperceptions and doctors giving bad advice. I mean, I know you people want to believe their doctor up in the U.S. or Canada, but like, don't. you wouldn't believe how many of them try to talk people out of coming here because yes. they don't know anything about it. And if they don't know anything well, about it, they'll tell you not to do it. Like, <laughs> Yeah, well, first, I have a bunch of opinions on doctors in general. Uh, <laughs> but one of them is, like, the, the generally, you need really good grades in school to be a doctor, right? Yeah. And what does that mean? That means that you're really good at memorizing other people's information and not thinking. Mm -hmm. Because there's nothing to do with thinking in schools, right? Yeah. So these guys are just really good at regurgitating information and and memorizing information, uh, and not really thinking for themselves too much. And not not all of them, obviously. I know a few really amazing doctors. There's, there's definitely a few. And then Doctor Paula here is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> so good right? But it's actually usually the general doctors that are really like the worst. Um, of course, there's like brain doctors and neurosurgeons who are just incredible, amazing people, right? Like amazing. But. Uh, <laughs> A lot of these general doctors, they're just like these guys who are just good at memorizing information. They're, they don't think for themselves, and they also get the propaganda that everyone else gets on the on the mainstream media, uh, and from uh, you know reports from the government and stuff like that. And yeah. they're like, oh, I, I wouldn't try that or anything like well, that. Well, they're trained to read off a list. Of, oh, you've got this. Okay, I memorize that. You take this pill. Yeah, they're, they're just good salesmen for big pharma. Yeah. A lot of not always, but not always, yeah. but a lot of them. Right? Yeah. So be careful with doctors, anyway. Uh, in general, um, but also do your own research, right? That's what it's all yeah. about. I, yeah, I don't expect, like, don't believe what I'm saying. Like, yeah, you really don't believe should. what I'm saying either. Yeah, please look it up. Yeah. Verify what I'm saying is correct. Yeah. I don't want people out there. I mean, yeah, like, you have to think for yourself. Totally. You know, so many people don't want it. It's, it sucks. Yeah, they've been trained to do that, so it's, <laughs> yeah. unfortunately. Um, Cool. Is there anything else that we didn't talk about that you want to mention? And if not, uh, just go ahead and tell people about your clinic where they can get more information, anything like that. Yeah. So, I mean, if anyone wants to get a hold of us, uh, we're www.dreambody.clinic. And you can call us toll free at 833-445-9089. And that's really the easiest way. You know, I talk to just about everyone and we, we just do it that way and try to help as many people as we can. So that's it. <laughs> that's awesome. And if you don't know, I've had you on Anarchast twice in the past. Yeah. Uh, once to talk a lot about human growth hormone, which you also do. Uh, yeah. You might want to mention that a little bit that's too. That's a good point. Yeah. We also do hormone treatments. Growth hormone is awesome for anti-aging. It just kind of freezes you in time. It's kind of the way I like to describe it. It's not going to make you look young or anything, but it's just, it's an amino acid. It's bioidentical and it just, yeah, you get more energy. Everyone sleeps better, looks better, you know, skin gets better, you recover faster. 
whole host of things. And for men, it goes amazingly well with testosterone. Even some women, a lot of women need testosterone too, surprising. They just at lower doses. Like mm -hmm. uh, even my own mom takes tests, especially pre pre or postmenopausal women. Oh, it does life changing for them. It's oh, crazy. Yeah. yeah, I mean very low doses, but uh, for men, yeah, we do testosterone also. I mean, if you can get testosterone in the U.S. or Canada or wherever you're at, like I recommend getting it there. It is a little expensive here. And, but the problem is so many of these doctors, like we said, they're trying to read off a list and because testosterone is a steroid, <laughs> it's taboo and they're very, you know, worried about it and this. So like, they'll tell you, oh yeah, you're at like 380. That, that's okay for your age. Like, I don't want to feel my age. <laughs> so like, we do hormone treatment. Yeah, I want to just be okay. Yeah, we, we want people feeling like they're 20 again. That's what we do basically, yeah. Awesome, yeah, so you, um and I have to say, I do all these things. So I do uh, testosterone, I do HGH. I've been doing HGH for a couple of years now. Yeah. And um, my wife and my kids actually, within like two weeks of me doing HGH, they all said, uh, "You look, your skin looks like 10 years younger. And I didn't even tell them I was doing the HGH. Yeah. So it wasn't like a placebo effect or anything. And I said, like, oh, I guess this stuff works. So uh, for guys, especially guys out there, you mentioned for girls, I didn't even know that tests can work for women. But uh, for guys, I can speak for guys, I'm 48 years old. Doing uh, uh, testosterone, doing HGH, and these stem cells, it's, uh, I feel amazing. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're a person, right? Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> and I barely, I, I do go to the gym quite a bit, but I don't even have to. Like, <laughs> it's yeah, like, this has been uh, the worst year of my <laughs> life working out. Like, I, I always get at least one day a weekend, but like, I mean, we're, I'm down to maybe two, three times max a week. And I used to be the guys in there five or six days a week, you yeah, know, in our, and really don't have to anymore. Yeah. And it's weird, but yeah. Um, and a lot of these things are like, um, you mentioned about the stem cells, that after we stop growing, we basically are done with the stem cells, right? Mm -hmm. um, and same with the human growth hormone, I, I know enough about it that like as you age, your body produces less and less. So obviously yeah. when you're young, when you're growing, it produces tons. Uh, you get into your 30s, 40s, 50s, it's just down, down, down to almost nothing really. Um, and then on the testosterone as well, I, I don't know about this as much, maybe you do, but I think most guys, as they get older, their testosterone probably goes down. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it's like, I've only seen two guys in six years over 40 that had testosterone in the range I would consider okay. Oh, really? Yeah, so your average person is, is low on testosterone, if you're over 40. If you're over 40, it's like a guarantee you're low almost, uh, yeah. And I mean, even guys in their 30s now, there's so much estrogenic things and like, plastic and other mm. things like it's happening younger and younger so that's a big problem um, and then back to the growth the other interest like I've actually got my daughter taking it right now and that's actually it's FDA approved use is for children to grow taller mm -hmm. like me personally I didn't think she would need it she's kind of tall enough but my wife's real short and she wished she had had that option when she was young so my daughter decided she wanted to do it so I've been filming it and like I'll we'll post some new videos of it she's been growing and uh, we've had quite a few kids actually in the last few years because even in the U.S. to qualify for it, they jack the price. I mean, it's like five times more expensive than it is here because they know the insurance will pay for it. So they just jack the price up and they've got this chart that if you're this height by this age, you, quali you don't qualify, like you're in the normal range. And there's so many kids at the bottom of that chart that just don't qualify, and, but they're really short for their age. So. Had a lot of really good parents who've done their research. Like we actually had a lot of nurses that have brought their sons and daughters to come get growth hormone to grow taller. So I mean, it's it's safe enough for little kids. I mean, it's it's actual like approved use. So yeah, it's and it's so, interesting. Yeah, my kids both do it as well. Uh, my yeah. wife's tiny, and you've met her, and she's sitting over there, <laughs> uh, and she she is like, I I don't want our kids to be tiny like me. I want them to be a little bigger. So she got them on the hormones as well. For your average person lives like in the U.S., um, can they even get growth hormone? Or because I know you have something where they can come down here and get it, here, oh. and they're allowed to bring it back into the land of the free. <laughs> yeah, so there's this uh, called a legal loophole that <laughs> uh, you're able to seek medical treatment abroad and return home with up to 50 dose units. And this applies to the United States, almost every other country. It's a 90-day supply, so like Canada, most of Europe. Um, the only countries it's tough are like Australia excuse me, in Germany, for whatever, their just customs are too tough. I mean, Australia arrested Sylvester Stallone for growth hormone. I mean, like, who's crazy enough to arrest Rambo, you know? I mean, come on. So they arrest Johnny Depp for bringing his dog or something without a proper vaccine. Like, so, Australia is like the, yeah. one of the craziest, most uh, horrible police states in the world. Yeah, so lots of just <laughs> dumb stuff. But yeah, pretty much anywhere else, U.S. 50-dose units, 
Canada, anywhere else, Europe, 90 day supply. So for you know the US, we just dish it out a one do high dose a week for 50 weeks, get your stuff, go home for Canada, we just load them up with a lot for 90 days and you know, no one's gonna go check your fridge. <laughs> you know, that's where you usually keep it. So it works for most any medication, but we specifically focus on growth hormone, testosterone. We do some of the focus medicines like modafinil and stuff. I really love that stuff. It just gets you focused and doesn't really have any downside to it, which is pretty awesome. But I mean, I'm telling people this too, so they know because I mean, there's other medications that we don't focus on that like, look at Mexico or look somewhere else because you may be able to get it cheaper or better. I mean, a lot of Americans go to Canada to get medicines that are cheaper than in the US. So hopefully it helps some people. Huh? Yeah, totally. So that's it, we're on our way out of Puerto Vallarta. Josh is actually giving us a ride himself. Very generous and uh, nice of him to do so on a Sunday. His driver I don't think was working today, but he actually had a driver drive us around all week. Came uh, had a good time here in Puerto Vallarta. The best time. Yeah, it was really actually amazing. Uh, we stayed in the Punta Mita area. We stayed at the W Hotel. Uh, we ate every night in Punta Mita, which is about an hour from Puerto Vallarta, but uh, it's a lot quieter and the restaurants were all amazing. Go to Casa Teresa. Uh, que was the uh, primero? Um, El primero Punta Mercedes. Punta Mercedes for some of the best steak you've ever had in your life. And Si Senor is uh, for great seafood for the most part. And all three of them were amazing. So we're feeling great. Uh, just a few sort of wrap up notes on the stem cells. Um, one thing I found out afterwards is you shouldn't work out or drink too much or do anything that causes inflammation for at least a week after you do stem cells because what will happen, actually maybe Josh can kind of explain what happens. Well, you're doing the IV and they target inflammation. So if you're causing inflammation in areas where, you know, you, you don't want it to go there, like say your liver or your kidneys, if you don't have any liver or kidney problems, I mean, if you go out drinking, they're gonna go there because you're causing that inflammation. So it's best just to take it light for the week after and let them go where they're needed. Yeah, I actually did a light workout the next day because I wasn't aware of that, but it was nothing crazy. I don't work out like my crazy wife with her <laughs> personal trainer, like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I just went and moved around a little bit, got my blood going, so I think I'll be all right on that. And uh, Yeah, uh, you know, amazing stuff. When you look into the stem cell stuff, the more I look into it, the more I'm like, people need to know about this stuff. Uh, you know, we can't make, I can't personally make any claims, but I've heard from so many people now that it cures type 2 diabetes, it cures cancer in many ways. Uh, ways it cures almost anything you have a multiple sclerosis I've heard uh, I've heard uh, lupus uh, basically everything uh, uh, even if your knees busted up it will help fix that as well as, as Josh was telling us so you know do your own research but uh, you know if you're sick at all definitely look into this and even if you're not sick but maybe you're getting a little older like me and you want to do a little bit of uh, getting ahead of the game which I think is always the smart way to do it uh, you know don't wait till you're really sick with some terrible disease disease before you do something right like actually do something ahead of time and uh, look into just doing what I do which is once a year stem cells and uh, I feel amazing we've been feeling amazing even since we did the stem cells so if you like this video please like subscribe share down below and sort of a little di bit different uh, format for Anarchast here we might do a bit more of these sort of things uh, instead of just the straight-up interviews uh, let, let us know if you like that in the, in the comments down below and that's it for Anarchast show for anarchy on the internet peace love and anarchy all right, hey, it's Josh, Dream Body Clinic. You know, one last thing that uh, we didn't mention there is that we do accept cryptocurrencies. We take Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Ripple, um, Ethereum, and yeah, that's pretty much it right now that uh, the, the company that we're working with here in Mexico accepts. And if you do decide to pay with a cryptocurrency, we prefer it, and it's way better for us. We can save you 5%. I mean, that's typically what the credit cards and things are charging us anyway. And it's just easier for everyone that way. I mean, you gotta love the crypto so much faster, more convenient, everything. So hope that helps. And if you wanna get a hold of us, it's www.dreambody.clinic. Yeah.